talk in these slides about the concept of a field. So first we'll talk about a scalar field. A scalar field means that at every point in space, there's associated with that point a number. I just drew here four of the points and put numbers associated with those four points, but in principle, every single point in space should be associated with it a number. Can you think of a, of a physical quantity that uh, is a number and that it, it can be, every point in space can be associated a number? Well, of course, I think a simple example is a temperature field. If you get a thermometer and you put the measuring point of the thermometer at this point, it will give you a number. If you put the thermometer at this point, it will give another number and so on. So every single point in space can be associated with a value of the temperature. And the temperature at a certain point can change with time. If you go to this point and you measure the temperature now, and then you wait for another five minutes and you measure the temperature again, the temperature might be different. So in general, the temperature field depends on position, but it also depends on time. The other kind of field we have is a vector field. And in this case, we associate with every point in space a vector. Here I drew only three points, this point and this point and this point. And this vector is the one that's associated with this point. This vector is associated with this point, And this vector is associated with this point. Of course, as the case for the scalar field, the vector field is defined at every single point in space. Can you think of a physical quantity that is defined at every point in space and it's a vector quantity? One of the things we could think about is the average velocity vector of a fluid. So for instance, imagine you get a small cube and inside the cube, of course, you, there will not be just one single molecule. You'll have many, 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 many molecules. I just put three of them here to illustrate. Each one of those molecules has a velocity vector. But what if you get the average velocity of all these vectors? And you shrink the cube to a much smaller size. When you shrink the cube to a very small size that tends to zero and you calculate the average velocity vector, then you can then associate with one point in space, the center of the cube, this velocity vector. Do the same thing at different points in space and that way you can make something called a velocity vector, uh, vector, a velocity vector of the fluid. So uh, field. So this now field it exists, it, it, it's represented at every point by a vector. And the same as we said before, if, the, uh, if time, if you go to a different point in time, the velocity vector at that point can change. It doesn't have to stay the same. So in general, the velocity vector can changes with position, but it also can change with time.